called CODIT. And it stands for Compartmentalization of Decay in Trees. And so basically we want to give the tree, using the cut that we make, give the tree the best chance it can at compartmentalizing and reduce the amount of decay that we're going to leave in the tree. So, and we do that by identifying branch bark ridges and collars. On here is really evident what our ridge and what our collar is. This is what we'd call a ridge right here. And the collar is this next part that's coming in and around the branch here. Trees have vessels or fibers inside of them, right? Just like any living organism. And those vessels and fibers are orientated in different ways. And this attachment point is a complex area where those fibers change, their angles change. For the most part, in the pedestal or the trunk of the tree, we have vertically arranged fibers. So they're coming up. But what starts to happen when it goes out into a branch, those fibers more or less take this kind of angle, but they come more laterally. And there's also some overlapping here. So I'm gonna draw a few lines. Where this curl is occurring, that's generally where we're getting that little bulge of a collar, right? And what's interesting about this spot is that if we cut flush to the pedestal, we are actually cutting into some of these fibers right here. And those fibers now expose these vertical fibers in the trunk to decay. It exposes it to opportunities for decay in the vertical. So we, by cutting flush the trunk, we have exposed this much area to decay, right? And we talked about heartwood and sapwood and how the center of the tree is more susceptible to that. We've ex exposed that much more area to decay. Now, if we make our cut out from the collar in these fibers where there's no vertical fibers here, there's only the horizontal branch fibers, this tree now only has to respond and compartmentalize I'm going to use a different color, and compartmentalize the branch here itself. So this green area, and usually it goes into the pith. And when we talk about compartmentalization, there's kind of four walls. So the first wall resists vertical spread of the decay. And that's that's this blue stuff. So where this green loop is, these this green loop, this is your, full, your, first, your first zone, your first barrier zone, which resists vertical decay. The second revert, resists inward decay. The zone resists inward decay. Third zone, if we were to look at a cookie, it resists lateral or radial decay. So decay in this direction. That's what your third zone resists. So it seals off, that's your, that's your third barrier zone. And your fourth zone comes in right here. On these guys, you see how this part is overlapping? That one's that dead branch? That's the fourth zone. And then look at how much of a nub that is. I mean, you look at that from over here and be like, oh, well that's not, that's not to the collar, it needs to go like here. But we, we identified where the collar was, right? And the collar is definitely out a little bit farther on that. Here with Arboriculture Canada, long way home from home for the poor cowboy, the cowpoke from Alberta. He's an arborist. <laughs>